and welcome to the preview show where the Stags Bar Monarchs take on the Workington Comets this Friday evening at Armadale Stadium. Joining me to look ahead to that match is Josh Pickering. Josh, wonderful weather here at Armadale. This must be about the best weather you've ever seen since you came to Scotland, surely. Yeah, the last few weeks it's been unreal, probably because we haven't had any matches on. Um, I was talking to Ryan today and, and the, the sun's supposed to be out till Tuesday and I said, oh, we expected rain on Friday, so... Um, we're, we're not luckily, but it's, it's usually the way in it. You get sun all week and then it comes to a Friday and it starts to rain. Mm. But I'm um, nah, definitely enjoying this shorts and t-shirt weather. Uh, as we say, the, the guys were in with, as we record on Wednesday, water on the track, getting stuff done. Josh, how hard is it on when the weather is like this to keep the track conditions so that they aren't as, as dry as what they are just now? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's crazy. At the start of the year, we couldn't get enough rain. And... Um, you had rain out, rain out after rain out, and and now it's the opposite. You got to keep pumping water into it, and um, that's what that's the thing. They're, they're not getting enough water into it at the moment. I, I think anyway. Like usually, you're looking at raining two, three days a week at least, and we haven't had any rain in a couple of weeks now. And um, so, yeah, I, it's they need to put some water into it for Friday. I think to make it a bit heavier for Workington. Uh, just before we go on to your own form, Josh, uh, our last outing was a magnificent one. Uh, at the home of our fiercest rivals at Glasgow, progressed into the next round of the KO Cup. Is that your, your, the best match you've been involved in since in your time with the Monarchs so far? Uh, it's hard to say. It, it, individually, I could have done a lot more. Um, first first race, I was away and crashed. You know, like that was a mistake mistake on my behalf, and you know, I've got to learn from that. But then um, had a little bit of a bike problem that shouldn't have happened. And, I should have got a few more points in the, in the heat four, which I didn't, and so I started off with two zeros, which wasn't good. And then um, to bounce back with a win and then a paid win, it was good. But uh, in heat 14, we should have sealed the deal there. And um, I had another thing I had a problem that's never happened before, and the chain actually jumped off the bike when me and Paul start come together. And and if anything's going to happen, it's always going to happen against Glasgow, isn't it? So um, it, it seems that every every bit of bad luck I've had, it's always been up against Glasgow. <laughs> so to leave there with a win, it, it was good, and it was good for the for all the Monarchs fans and stuff that always travel there, and for a few of the fans that sort of rode us off, I suppose, um, when we only had that two point lead. I need to remember that, you know, at the start of the year when Glasgow came here, they done us by ten, and uh, we bounced back, and we've already improved to that, and we've beat them by two, but. To be honest, we could have won by at least 10 that night, yep. you know what I mean? So the boys are progressing, we've got a good side, and um, yeah, I think the, for, I'm not, not trying to get involved with the fans or anything like that, everyone's got their own opinion, but um, usually they might say something and they don't realise that the riders see everything, you know? Yep. And, and if we see that we're going there and the fans are expecting us to get pumped, then it sort of, it triggers us on, but yep. it also makes us feel like, well, you know that's not right you know yeah. we should be backing each other 100 percent so um yeah the boys they're all feeling confident including myself and yeah it's going to be a good year i think uh, after heat seven i think it was the boys were 11 points down got that five one in, in, in heat eight it was really the turning point in the whole the, the kind of two legs really josh um what was said before that was there was there any sort of team meeting was when you got that five one was there a bust of wait a minute we can do this this can actually still happen we're not we're not dead and buried yet no well, I've got that never die attitude um, some people like it some people don't I don't, I don't really care it's how I am but um, I I was confident going into it and we we had a, a bit of a uh, talk on the track in, in turn two there um, after track walk and I was. We just had to believe in ourselves, as simple as that. Like, at the end of the day, we're up against seven other riders in seven other, in seven other helmets. Like, they're no one special. We can, if we're in the team, we can beat that team. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, we've got all good riders, and I, I, I had a good feeling that day, and it, it turned out it to be a very good day. But um, there wasn't much said, but after that, I suppose, heat eight, I, I, um, I think I stepped up another level just in the pits myself and tried to just encourage everyone on and make sure, you know, we're not out of this. Like, I understood we were 11 points down and mate, we were 12 down at Scunthorpe, we won by eight, you know what I mean? So I thought it was very, very possible. And then Ricky was on fire, Eric was on fire. Mark's capable of winning every race as well. I knew, I, you know, I, I felt good and I was ready to keep going. Cody was going good. Max was a bit unfortunate with him having a crash, but even you know, like Joel with that 5-1 um, with me in heat eight, well, we all just spurred on a bit, you know? Yeah. And, and I think uh, Glasgow started to worry then after that, and you know, and then we got a four-two heat nine, I think, and then I forget what happened after that to be <laughs> honest. But um, 
It's, we should have won by more. My personal score, I should have at least got 12, and I ended up on six by two errors. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, you said about my uh, individual riding. Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going good, I suppose. And not great, but there's always room for improvement. And um, yeah, I, there's more points to come. Of course, the Stags Bar Monarchs then move on to a different local rival in Berwick Bandits. Uh, in the next round of the Cup, of course, we take them on on June 29th and 30th. It'll be an exciting Cup weekend there. Uh, you mentioned uh, your own form there, Josh. Uh, you started the season down at reserve. Uh, in a way, did you, expect, did you expect from yourself a lot of points starting down there at number seven? Yeah, yes and no. To be honest, you've only got that really that easy race in heat two. After that, it's, it's pretty the same. Yeah, yep. you're up against another opposition reserve, but you're also with your heat leaders and you know your second strings and so on. And even like your number five, you, you can't up against them and the, and the opposition. So um, it's just probably fortunate for me that if Joel or Max isn't doing so well, I, I can probably go in for a ride for yep. him and stuff like that. But uh, on a uh, normal format, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not worried like where I ride, considering I went down to Newcastle, I'm not really a fan of that track and um, when I guessed the few switched and I scored 10, so I'm capable of scoring points in the, it don't matter where I'm, I am in the team, you know. Of course, uh, as we said at the top of the show, we take on the working team Comets this Friday evening, Josh, uh, just looking ahead to that, Max, as you say, took a tumble at Glasgow, obviously the guys are very close in the group chat and stuff like that, uh, how is Max after the crash, we've seen him in America, is he, is he going to be fully fit for Friday then? Yeah, for sure mate, he, um, he got a bit of a head knock and they uh, he was fine, he felt okay, but you can't take any precautions when it comes to your head I suppose, and um, he sat out the rest of the day, but uh, he went home a couple of days later, and I believe he got third in that meeting he done back home, and he was feeling good. Like last year, I was in a bit of a slump stage. Well, I thought I was, but it, it didn't really seem that way. But I didn't really, you know, I wasn't happy, and I, I was missing home a fair bit. And so we went home mid-year when the, this time last year. And um, yeah, it, it, it's sometimes what you need if you're you're not away from home, and then yep. you you just go. You know what I mean, like that. So. Um, it's it's going to do him a world of good, I think. Going home, seeing his girlfriend, seeing his mates, riding at home again. Like he's coming back here now. He's got the next three months or four months, however long we've got left, and he's got a job to do, and so do we all. So um, yeah, I think there's more to come from Max. That's for sure. Yeah, a refresh Max for all coming back on Friday evening. But just to look at our opposition, Josh, they've had a few big results away from home this season already. They look a strong a strong side. Uh, they've got quality throughout there. Uh, a team to be wary of, Workington? Yeah, you can't rule them out. They have um, Mason's good gator, Dan Buell is a great racer, uh, Proctor is a great racer. Mm -hmm. well, there's so many very good riders in there, but they've got to remember that they're riding against seven very good riders as well, as well especially around probably one of the hardest tracks in, in the Championship League, you know, so um, uh, it's, it's going to be a good match. I think we're in for a, a good meeting. The fellow was there that you, you, you mentioned was Ty Proctor. Uh, Ty started the season really well, especially in the Premiership as well. He, he's got to be one that we've got to be wary of on Friday, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely, mate. He can ride a, a small track quite well. His uh, home track in Australia is Undera, and that's that's tiny. It's uh, not much. I think it's around similar size to this. But um, yeah, Ty, Ty's a very good rider. He's a very experienced rider, and um, when he had that spell at home for a couple of years, it's it's made him more than hungry than, than anything. You know what I mean? And, and how they were saying he's in the form of his life. He's, I, I don't know what he done previously, because obviously I wasn't in speed by then, but um, he is coming very good, of course. Uh, before, we, uh, before we give you the ticket information ahead of Friday's uh, match, uh, we can go to Mike Hunter's Blast for the Pass, some classic Armadale action. Still at the start, and we might get away this time. Carl's been back to the pits. We've no idea what for. Greaves is away well, but even better from the outside, it's Brent Werner. Stone Ewers round the outside. Greaves in second, chasing Werner. Cars on Stone Ewers' tail, remember he's on a borrowed machine. He's on a better line than Stone Ewers there though. Stone Ewers been pushed to the back. Cars are looking for three here. An engine failure never seems out of the question for the Edinburgh riders at the moment. The full clear of Stone here, whose machine, machine I don't think is functioning properly, into the last lap. 
Reeves is certainly thinking about that victory as he gets to the last corner. He's got three points in mind. And look at this from James Greaves. What a last bend by Greaves. What a victory that was. Absolutely wonderful ride by James there. He had never gave up the chase there and he took the three points with a superb last corner. And that is enough to carry Monarchs home after three appalling blocks. Uh, thank you to Mike Hunter for providing two classic races there uh, from Armadale. And we look forward to seeing you Friday night. Don't forget, you can get your discounted tickets uh, on the website up until midnight on Thursday evening uh, for Friday's clash against the Workington Comets. But if not, you can also pay the gate. Gates open at half past six. Uh, but until uh, Saturday's Friday focus, it's goodbye for me. Uh, Good night from Josh. Thank you. Thank you.